Hi, I'm D. Lee Beard, and this is our fourth video on Final Cut Pro. Uh, before we talked about how to import video, then we talked about the couple of um, interface settings that you need to make sure that you set up in Final Cut, and then the other third video we talked about editing in Final Cut Pro, and now I'm going to talk about some intermediate levels, not quite advanced exactly, but more intermediate skills that you might need. For instance, how to grab a still frame out of a video so that you can play it longer. Uh, other thing is to work with uh, such as titles, uh, adding text to your video, lower thirds, things like that. Um, some transition effects, color correction, things like that. So things that can be very valuable to the average user and yet are a little bit beyond just basic editing. So hopefully this is going to be helpful to you. One of the first things I'd like to show you is cutting up a video. Often if you shoot video you may shoot from two different cameras at the same time and that's kind of important to get the best angle depending on how things go. You may want to sync them up and one of the things we do to sync up is we do a nice little clap and then the clap, we can sync them up. I talked about that in the previous video about syncing up clips based upon audio. Well, sometimes there's a flub up in the, in the tracks. So I may come along here and I'm looking at this video and I realize I, I made a boo-boo right, right there. I needed to cut a piece out because we had a technical glitch or something. So you want to cut a piece out. Basically, you can just go to the blade tool and that, do that by hitting the letter B, but you can also hit it over here uh, in that little toolbar. And then I come on over here, get it queued up just to the right spot, click, click and there's a blade tool and then I come to the end here. where I want to pick up again where I try again which is maybe right here let's pretend click there click there and then what you do is you just go back to the A tool uh, that is the pen tool the little pointer I mean pointer tool you're hitting the A key on the keyboard and then you can just select those and then you can delete them with the not the backspace delete but with the right delete that's over there by the page up page down key and then you delete those and now it got rid of those when we play this I'll just kind of show you here there you go oh now you see there's a little bit of jerkiness let me show you that again so you can see that like I'll just kind of show you here and so there's a little bit of a, mm, a jerk and that's because they weren't quite matched up the same way because we took out a piece well sometimes you can fudge that a little bit let me show you how if I come down here and I, I get my little crosshairs here my pointers and I can mm, slide that over so now, when I do this, let's see if we notice a difference. I'll just kind of show you here. But see, you didn't notice because it was a switching cameras. I was involved in a motion there, and it looks like there was that it was perfect. I'll play that for you again. Anyway, like I'll just kind of show you here. But uh, you had no idea that I cut something out, and that's the way you want to do it. And sometimes to get your cuts just right, don't forget to turn on your audio waveforms, because that way you can view the audio and see, ah, here's a good place to cut. So when I go to Blade, I may want to cut right there and right there um, because those will be right there on the zoom in just a little bit and I realize, so that's right there between uh, the waveforms. I'll just undo those and show you again. So right there's a good place to cut right in between there because that's a nice little break. You don't want to have it cut right on the edge and then pop right into another segment that starts up right there. It'll sound too abrupt. It won't work too well. So make sure you always give a little bit of a um, quiet space but on the end of each and the beginning of each clip and that should make your transitions work a lot better. One of the other things you can do is sometimes you know you can if you're talking about a particular item you can also just drag an image down to kind of cover up over that period and then they don't notice anything because let me zoom out just a bit because then when they're doing it to zoom in on your screen they're just going to see this I'll just kind of show you all right now this brings me to a great opportunity to explain something to you if you look at this and hopefully you can see this on the screen there's some stuff at the bottom here you can still see part of my set let me show you if I go over here uh, actually pull this all the way over you can still see some of the set underneath there and there's a little bit of space at the bottom because this picture isn't the same size as the video that I was shooting at. Well you can change that a little bit. There's a couple of things that you can do. I'm going to show you a couple of ideas. One is you can stretch the image. You can move the, you can try to move the image. What you do is you have to double click on it or just click once would work fine and then you go to here to move it and you can't move it unless you see these this X over it. I'll show you what I mean. There's a crosshair, there's a wire frame that they talk about. You come over here to this little button and you choose image plus the wire frame. So you can see the image and the wire frame and because I've selected this clip and not this one, make sure you choose the right one. Then when I click on it, I can move it 
and I can do a couple of things. One is I could get it down here in the corner and I could grab this top corner. If you can see this, you need to get to where it's a plus sign. It's real hard to see. If I pull it over here, it'll be a little bit easier to see the point, the pointer. You click and then you can drag and you can stretch it up to make it bigger and maybe that'll fill up the screen for you if the key part is what you need right there. Now if you needed something actually smaller because you needed to see these little buttons over here, let me just undo holding down the command and hitting the Z key. Oh, and see each action is, even every move is an action. That's why I said in the er, one of the first videos that you ought to make sure you change your levels of undo to like 50. <laughs> and uh, there we go. There we were back sort of at the beginning. Well, what you can do is you can put an image in the background to kind of hide this, to kind of cover this up. And I'll show you one of the neat things that I like to do. And that is take a screen grab that I can drag in behind this. So what that means is, let me drag this down. I'm just clicking here and pulling this down. I'm trying to create more space for another video layer that I want to add up here. So if I'm going to pull this one up here, and what I need to do is to put an image here that'll block seeing this level down here where I am with at the, this big table. So what I do is I often find a piece of black in the screen like this. It doesn't matter what size you do it in because you're going to stretch it in solid black. Is you can put a black background. And I'll show you how to do that. You hold down the Apple Shift key. Hold down the Apple. That is now the Command key. The Apple logo is no longer on that key. It's the one right next to the space bar. But the Command key and Shift. And then you press the number 4 uh, up at the top row. And now you'll see that I've got this these crosshairs. And that's where I can drag and drop from what I want. Now, by the way, you can also hit the space bar and it'll turn in like a camera image to take of whatever of whatever uh, window you want to get a screen grab of. So that way you can get a picture of the entire screen and none of the background stuff that might be on your desktop, which is kind of neat. But if you hit the space bar again, it turns back to the crosshairs. And all I have to do is to create a little box of black. And I'm going to do a screen grab. And cl click and drag. And that's all I need. If I go to my desktop, there's picture one. And all I have to do is to drag this. Well, for organization purposes, make sure you put it into your same folder that you're doing all your Final Cut uh, projects. Did I actually set up? Yeah, Final Cut Pro tutorial. So I need to open a new f uh, Finder window, hitting Command N, going to my desktop. And I want to drag this in here. You don't want to just leave stuff all over because if you go to delete it later, it can't find that file because it's not with the rest. Or if you even move it, it can't find it. So I moved it over here into my movies folder, into my Final Cut tutorial folder, which is the folder we've been creating this whole project on. And then I can just drag this over here alongside my videos and other pictures. And then all I have to do is take picture one and drag it down here. And now it's underneath it. So now when we play, I'll hit the space bar, zoom in on your screen manually. Like I'll just kind of show you. Oh, it actually didn't show, and I'll show you why. Click on here, and we can see the image wireframe. The box is not, let me turn this one off so you can see. So I just turned this layer off. There's the box. We were still seeing stuff around the bottom because it wasn't big enough. And then all you have to do is what we did about earlier about stretching, just stretch it until it's definitely big enough. I just stretched it really big so it filled up the whole screen. Now I turn this back on. And now when I play this, there you go. We're not seeing anything. This little stuff you see at the top is just a, an artifact of uh, the way the image was cropped. So there you go. So that's a great little trick to be able to pop that in behind. And I show you this way because you can do this with other things. If you have a web page, like Apple's web pages are known to be white, like the, all of their computers. You can actually do a screen grab of anything white. I mean, you can go to the Finder window and just find a little, again, do that Apple Shift 4, and let's just do a little crosshair around a little piece of white. I can make it really small if I want. And again, just for testing purposes, I'm going to drag that up here, and I can drag it down here. And now I've got this white block, and again, I can stretch this puppy, making it really big to fill up the whole screen. 